Okay. <laughs> so the, the trickiest bit of the implementing the matrix class is to implement the matrix multiplication operator. All the rest of it's pretty easy, isn't it? To do the addition and to do the subtraction and to set up the identity matrix, that's pretty straightforward. So I think before we actually go and look at the code and code it up ourselves, let's just do a small example <coughs> of the problem we're trying to solve, right? And we'll pick one that's maybe not a sort of, um, where the rows and the columns are not the same, not a four by four by a four by four, because that's kind of easy. You know that where, say, the rows and the columns are always going to be four. Let's pick something like a three by two and then a two by four matrix, all right, to multiply. So we've got different numbers of rows and different numbers of columns. So first of all, this is the rows count, this is the columns count, this is the rows count, and this is the columns count. And I know that for these matrices to be multipliable, these two numbers have to be the same, isn't that right? And then how many rows and columns will the output matrix have? Three by four. So it'll have the number of rows from the first one, isn't that right? Times the columns from the second one. So it will be a three by four matrix. So when we're writing our multiplication operator overloaded, the first thing we do, we declare a new matrix, which is going to be our output matrix, and it's going to have the number of rows from the first one and the number of columns from the second one. All right, so that's the first thing we do. That's our input matrix. Is that okay? Here is to check if you can multiply. Yeah, we should do that. We'll, we'll, we'll actually come to that in a week or two, because I want to show you a really cool way of doing that in C-sharp by using what they call an exception. So we can throw an exception if the matrices are not multipliable, right? So let's presume for now that they are. And if you want to put that error handling in, there's a really nice way to do it in C-sharp. You don't have to do an if statement. Well, you do, but... To, to check the error, you can catch the exception. You can say these are not multipliable. It's a much nicer way to do error handling. So, right, let's draw up a couple of matrices. So we've got three rows and two columns. So let's make this little matrix. Two, one, uh, three, two, minus one, four. So that's got three rows and two columns, isn't it? Is that all right with everyone? And then let's make one which is two rows and four columns. So this is going to have, uh, let's say, eight, two, one, zero, three, one, seven, two. So this then has two rows and four columns. All right. And then to do the multiplication, what we do, we take this row, multiply by this column. And this is why, if you look at it, this number has to be the same as this number. Can everybody see that? Because you have to take a number from here and multiply it by the equivalent column. Does everybody see that? So that's why these, you know, you've got to have the columns here, two rows, two columns. So we can take two by eight and one by three. So we'll multiply this one out because it isn't going to take us too long. So to do this one, we take two eights, or 16, plus one times three is three. So 16 plus three is 19, isn't that right? So this time we're going to get um, three rows and four columns. Okay, so then let's take the next one. So to take the next one, we take the first row by the second column. So two twos are four, once two is two. So two twos are four, once two is two is uh, six. And then we take the next one, which is going to be uh, two ones are two, one seven is seven. So two plus seven, sorry, two plus seven is nine. You have to be very meticulous when you're doing this. Two zeros, and then once two is two. So that's our first row. So then we take the next row by the zero of column. So we're taking three eights are 24, plus two threes are six. So we end up with 30. Is that okay with everybody? Can everybody see the, the technique that we're following here? <coughs> is that okay? So let's think about the algorithm that we're doing here, okay? What we're doing is we are, first of all, how many times have we got to go through it, right? Well, we have to take the number of rows from this, and that's the number of times that we have to, to go through it initially, okay? And then, so for each row here, so first of all, I'm going to have something that says, you know, for row equals zero, semicolon row is less than the first one, the number of rows in the first one, semicolon row plus plus, okay? So that's going to allow us to go through this matrix, row by row. All right, and then we need to. Once we've gone through this row by row, then we do the say the zeroth row. Then we need to do 
So two times this, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, we need to go column by column as well, don't we? Yeah. Column of first one. So we take the columns of the first one as well, yeah? All equals zero, semicolon. Hang on, let's think about this, right? The number of columns in the, in the, in the zero one as well. Uh, no, I need to take the number of columns in the second one because I need to end up with four. Isn't that fair enough? I need to take the columns in the second one because I need to fill each space here. Isn't that fair enough? <laughs> All right, so if I go row by row, I'm going to end up with two rows. But then when I go column by column, I need to take the number of columns from the second one because I need to end up with one, two, I need to do it four times. Is that clear? All right. So, column is less than uh, b.calls. All right, so that gives me each cell here. All right, so first of all, I've got two rows and I have got five columns. All right, so now I know which cell I'm referring to. Is that fair enough? So now that I know which cell I'm referring to, how do you calculate a cell? Uh, call equals zero, calls less than b.columns, and then call plus plus. All right, within here then, I need to have a third for loop because now I only know which cell I'm referring to. Now I need to actually do the multiplication. And what do I do for this one? I take this entire row multiplied by this entire column. So basically, how many operations do I need to do? How many operations do I need? How many multiplication operations do I need to do? How would I know? Well, just look at it. 2 by 8, 1 by 3. How many multiplication operations is that? That's two multiplication operations. So I'm just going to need to go an entire row or an entire column because they're the same number, aren't they? So I need to do a third loop which goes through an entire row here, multiplies by an entire column here. So then I have, um, what should I call this? What did I call it in my solution? Call it I. Okay. Where's that guy? So then within here you go I equals zero, semicolon, I is less than the first one rows. A dot uh, calls. Yeah, because I want to do an entire row is two columns. Alright? Or you can do B dot rows, because they're the same number. It should be. And then what do you do? So we're going through an entire row here, and then I need to take the column that I'm currently dealing with, and the row, sorry, the row that I'm currently dealing with, and the column from I, and I multiply it by this one, the column, and the, and the row from I, and I multiply the two of those together, and I sum them all up. <coughs> all right, that's the technique. So you need three for loops to do it. The outer two for loops tells you which cell you're dealing with, because you need to basically make, you know, if you think about it, you're going to need, in order to populate this, you need three by four. So you need 12 operations, right? So that's why you need these two outer for loops. The inner for loop is to actually do the multiplication bit and to sum it up. I think that's the only way to do it with, 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 three, with three loops. And uh, just a piece of advice as well. Um, it took me a few goes to get this right. I didn't look it up, you know. It does take a couple of goes to think about it, because it gets two loops. Rows by columns, yeah, yeah. And then you work it out, and then you realize, oh, hang on, that doesn't work. So eventually you end up realizing that I think the only way to do it is with three loops. And um, another thing as well, it's the same as the game of logic, right? I think writing a matrix multiplication is something that every computer scientist should do at some stage in their four-year career. It's kind of a useful thing. You learn a fair bit by doing it. You know, and once you've got it done, then, uh, you know, you've progressed. You know, it's like you've unlocked an achievement. Only it's way more valuable than an achievement in an Xbox Live game or something like that, where basically you just put, you actually know something that you didn't previously know. So I'm going to delete all of this code here and we'll write it, okay? Here's the multiplication operator. So what did we say the first thing we needed to do was? First thing we need to do is we need to create a new matrix, which is... Got the number of rows from the first one times the number of columns from the second one. Is that all right? 
So, C matrix is my class, all right? And then I called it ref equals new C matrix. We're going to take the rows from A and the columns from B. A dot rows, comma B dot columns. Okay. So then let's write our for loops, our nested for loops. Okay, so for row equals zero, semicolon row is less than the number of rows in A, semicolon row plus plus. And then we said we have a nested for loop that goes, it should be int row. Our inner loop, which is going to go either the number of rows in this, the number of columns here, or the number of rows here, because they're the same number. We presume that they're the same number. I equals zero. Semicolon I is less than A dot rows. Sorry, A dot calls, isn't it? We do basically an entire row, which means we take the number of columns. So now I'm going to take this one. So now I need to figure out how do I do my multiplication. So first of all, let's declare a flow here. And then this is going to hold the sum of the multiplication operator. Let's call it sum instead of time. So sum plus equals to, so I need to take this element multiplied by this element here. So this is going to be row number, the row <coughs> multiplied by column i. All right, so a uh, dot get uh, the row, comma, the column i, multiplied by b dot get the i, which is going to give me the row number, Multiply by the column. And then once I've done that operation, I need to set the return value matrix. So, uh, yeah, row, comma, column, comma, sum. And then each time around, we reset sum back to be 0 0.0f. What do you think? Does that make sense? Huh? What are we doing wrong here? Uh, I just need to return. Not semicolon. just a semicolon. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. What do you think? Is that all right with everybody? How many people got something similar to that? Couple of people. All right. Would you kind of understand it now? A row by row, column by column. I just, I suppose, the process is more important than the outcome. You know, just if you think about how I decomposed that and worked out the algorithm for doing it, that's kind of more useful than the actual outcome. Of it. Yeah. <coughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Think about. It. Of course it does. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're taking this entire row. So we take 2 multiplied by, like in this example, we're taking 2 by 8 and 1 by 3. So that's we're taking the current row multiplied by the i, which is the index into the row, into the, into the row, in other words, the column, right? And for the, you know, because we're taking this one multiplied by these ones, we've got to work this out, you know? If you're not 100% sure, then let's do a little worked example. Uh, I think actually that's a good plan. Let's do that. Let's set up two matrices and multiply them. And we'll just watch a couple of iterations through it. Okay, so C matrix. C matrix. Uh, do I have a couple already set up here? I've got CM and, and AM and stuff like that. Let's call this uh, M1. 
So it's a new C matrix, and this time we're taking three by two, so three rows and two columns. M2 is going to be equals to new C matrix, and the second one is a two by four, all right? So why don't we set these up? M1 dot set. Two, one, three, two. This might take a while. <clears throat> zero, comma, zero, comma, two. I'll just set a few of these values. I might just set the first row, okay? So we have two, and then we have uh, row number zero, column number one, row number zero, column number two, and then we have um, sorry, row numbers. There is no row number, there is no column number two. So it's just two and one and then three and two. So we've just set the second row up here, right? And then we'll do a couple of rows multiplication. So then that's going to be row number one, column number zero. And then the two values that I set on these guys are three and two. Oops. And then we have this one. Let's just set up the first couple of rows on this. So M2 dot set zero comma one comma 8, 2, 1, and 0, okay? 8, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 8, 2, 1, and 0. And we set the second row there. We set an entire column. Oh, wait, no, let's do the whole first matrix then so we can get an entire uh, column made. Or do we need, no, we need an entire, yeah, fuck it, we did a whole lot, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> I'll have myself cursing on YouTube. <laughs> we'll do the whole lot, because it'll only take a minute, right? <laughs> so then we have row number one, 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 and then we have column number these guys. And what have we got here? Three one seven two. Three one seven two. And then we've done row number one, row number two, so let's do row number three. Hang on, that's row number. Oh that's that one. Yeah, so it's this matrix I'm thinking about. Sorry. So we'll do the third row of this matrix. <coughs> Just yawning in my class. <laughs> so minus one and four. that everything? 0, 1, 2, and then we have 0. So we've just done one row, and then we've got a second row here. 1. Yeah, so we've got two rows here. Um, yeah, I think that looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Everyone following? Right. Uh, C matrix. M3 is going to be equals to M1 multiplied by M2. I hope this works. Right, and then let's do console dot right line m3. Okay, so set my breakpoint here, and we'll look at. Hopefully, we should get the first row by the first column. All right, so we reach this line of the code. Ah, oh, I need to set the breakpoint inside the C matrix class, otherwise it won't do the breakpoint. So here we go. Okay, so I have matrix A and matrix B, and then this return value matrix. So this is going to have four, four columns and three rows. So, yep, three rows multiplied by four columns. Okay, so it's made the matrix correctly. All right, so far. Now what we need to do is make sure that it's taken this multiplying it by this and setting the zeroth element in here to be the, hopefully the value 19. So okay, take row number zero. Oh uh, yeah, so we should start off with row number zero, which is fair enough, and then column number zero. And then we need to take a dot columns, which is two, right? And we're gonna sum up the values. So we're taking a at row number zero, column number i, and then we're taking this at row number i and column number call. 
So when we sum it all up, hopefully the sum should be hopefully 19. So that's okay. It's done the first one correctly. We'll just do one more iteration to let it do the second uh, cell. And this time it's going to be this row multiplied by this column here. So it should be two twos and then ones times one. So this time, row is equals to zero, so we're still on the zeroth row. We're doing this one here. And then our column should be equals to one. All right, so we're going to do this one here because column is equals to one. So we're taking a row, row, sum, sum, sum. So we should have two operations here. And then we get the sum of five. Why did I get a sum of five? Well, yeah, it's because two twos are four plus one's one is one. So it should be five. Yep. All right, so it's setting, it's setting the hopefully the row and the column correctly. So and there we go. Is that all right with everyone? You kind of follow now the logic of this. It's exactly as a human would do it, but it's just expressing it in the code is a, a small challenge. Right? Let's debug. Stop the. Uh, actually, let's let's let it continue and just make sure that the output output matrix it, it runs without crashing. So come back over here to program. And I'll set a breakpoint here right at the end of the program. I'll let it continue to there. And so when you look here, uh, M3 should have got set up correctly. So let's just have a quick look at it. So there we go. Four, uh, three by four matrix. And we have 19, five, which is correct. Nine and two, 30. Yeah, so it worked. Cool. Thought all right with everyone? So that's how you multiply matrices in a program. You can see that it's obviously the kind of thing that you want to get the computer to do whenever possible because it's very error prone. Is that alright with everyone? We move on and do the <coughs> next thing. Okay. The next thing, I just wanted to show you this, right? Because this is a fairly <laughs> fundamental concept in C Sharp. Before we go on and do the next thing with matrices, let's just uh, come back to the vector example, right? I have a C vector class here. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, V1. If I don't already have one called V1. This is the vector class that we made a few weeks back, right? So let me set the value of that to be 10 and 20. And yeah, I've already got one called V1. Let me call it v, V5. <coughs> Why am I getting an error there? Okay, I already have a V5. Let's call it V6. V6, V10. So I've got a V10. Okay, there's my vector V10. Console dot right line. V10. All right, pretty straightforward so far. What's going to get printed out there? 10 and 20. Okay, let me write a method here. C-sharp standard of making the method names uppercase. Do stuff. C vector. Okay, can everyone see what I've done? What's going to get printed out the second time around? Uh, okay, 10.20. Yeah, so who says 10.20? Who says five five? Oh come on, you have to say one or the other. You can't just not put your hand up. You have to have a theory as to why one or the other is gonna happen. So it's gonna be either one or the other, isn't it? But you have to have a theory. What's your how many people put how many people said ten ten or ten twenty? Why do you think ten twenty? Because it's passing through a copy. It's passing through a copy. That's that's a good theory, right? That's a very good theory. How many people say five five? 
Come on, there was a few there a minute ago. Why did you say 5 5? I just assumed that the new variable that's been added in is overwriting the old one. Someone's slid to the strings now. Okay, that's a good theory as well. Um, do you have any other theories? Same as I find up there, garbage collected, like it's taken on the new one. Yeah, you're just assigning the value to the old one. Right, you'll be surprised. How many people, will we just do another vote before we go? Because before we run it, how many people say 5 5? Ah, come on, that's that's weird. Like, there's more hands going up now. And how many people say 10 10? How many people didn't say either of one of the above? All right, you guys are off the course. <laughs> You have to have a theory. There has to be, you know, I don't care if it's the right theory or the wrong theory, but you have to have the hypothesis. You have to be able to look at the code and say, well, I think this is going to happen. It may or may not actually happen. Let's run it and see. Oh my goodness, look at that. Five. <laughs> now, does this maybe contradict what you might have already assumed about parameter passing? Okay, well actually everything you know about parameter passing is true. When you pass a parameter like that, it is a copy of the parameter that gets passed. What is the parameter? What, what, what is the parameter? What's its type? Uh, it's a reference, so a copy of the reference gets passed into memory. Okay? If you have the computer's memory is allocated, you know, a certain memory location to store, like my object like this, what all you're doing is you make a copy of the reference to the object, but it still points to the same object. So I need to just double check this because this is the case in Java. I haven't actually run it in C sharp, but I presume it is the case. Watch this. Now what's going to get printed out? What's going to get printed out now? 5, 5 or 10, 10? 10, 20. Sorry, 10, 20. How many people vote for 5, 5? How many people vote for 10, 20? So 10, 20, I think, is what's going to get printed out here. The reason why is because this is a copy of the reference to the old object. And then I am creating a new object from, you know, creating a new object with new values. That new object immediately gets thrown away because we finish the uh, method. All right, I think that's the case. So when we come back up here, you know, the old object is back. You know, because now I have um, two references pointing to the same object initially. One of the references is changed to point to a new object, but the old reference still points at the old object. So when we run the program, the 10 is still 1020. Is that interesting? That's a useful thing to know in C sharp, right? Um, a question you might be asked in an interview is to explain why this is the case and to explain how memory is allocated. Whenever you go new C vector, whenever you create a new instance of an object, where is it, where is it actually created? Do you know there's two places where, where memory can be allocated in a C sharp program? The heap and the stack. When you go equals new C vector like that, where is it created? It's the same in C as if you went malloc. Where is memory, where is things allocated if you go malloc in C? They're allocated onto the heap. All right? So it's less efficient actually to allocate memory onto the heap. All right? um, memory on the heap can stay around after the method finishes. You know? um, it's generally considered better to allocate. Local variables get allocated on the stack. And then as soon as the method unwinds, they get deleted automatically. But when you go equals new, they get allocated on the heap. These are all things you should know because these are all short questions in your C-sharp exam, right? Or potential questions in your next C-sharp MCQ. Okay, so you should be taking notes. Definitely. I want to show you something else. Let's change this program back to the way it used to be.
Okay, watch this, right? So we, we pretty much discovered that when we run this program here, we get the variable uh, 5, 5 printed out. Yeah, because a copy of the reference is passed in, but the reference, now I have two references pointing at the same object. Oh, fair enough. We agree? Everyone understands that? I'm going to change my C vector class. And I'm going to make two very small changes to it. Watch what I do here. Instead of using class, I'm going to change this to be the word struct. And if I change it to be the word struct, then I need to get rid of this default constructor. Bug, stop doing control B. I'm now going to build the program. Everything builds okay. When we previously ran this program, what did we get? We got 10, 20 printed out there, yeah? Watch what happens now. Sorry, when we previously ran this program, we got 5, 5 printed out, didn't we? Watch what happens now. <gasps> 10, 20. Huh? Excuse me? What has just happened? Can anybody explain? It's no longer passing a reference. It's, no lo it's obviously no longer passing a reference. What's it doing now? It's passing a copy. All right. So what have we learned from that? When you use struct in C-sharp, what does it do? Yeah, what it actually does is it, it no longer creates the variable on the heap. It creates the variable on the stack, and it makes it into what's called a value type in C sharp. Uh, structs are what are called value types. All right, so they don't get allocated in the same way as an object. They get allocated on the heap as if they were just an int or a car or uh, a float, and that's what structs are. If you notice the X and A framework, right, if you hover over anything like a, uh, a vector or a matrix. They're all structs. They're not actually classes in C sharp. And class structs in C sharp are what are called value types rather than reference types. And if you think about it, it makes much more sense to make these things out of structs and make them value types than to do references. And I'll show you why, right? Normally, we would do something like this. Right, V10, V11, and then I go something like that's equals to the vector 11, 11. And why don't we make this one equals to the vector 10, 10? You know, logically, when you do something like that, you just think, you know, if I go V10 <coughs> equals V11, and then I go V11, um, yeah, V11 dot X is equals to 12. Right? If the, the C vector was a class, <coughs> then when you're changing V11, you're also changing V10. Isn't that the case? Because all you're doing is you're assigning two references to point to the same memory address. And that, to me, is very counterintuitive. Right? I expect those things to be two separate objects when I create them like that. All right? So C sharp has the facility to make them structs. And if you make them structs, then they are separate objects. They're separate blocks, you know? And this example here, we go uh, v10 equals v11, v11.x equals 12, v11.y equals 12. We are only changing v11 because it's a value type. It's like two integers, you know, or two floats or whatever. You know, it's not the same as um, the reference types that we're previously used to. So just to prove that, I want to show you here. I'm going to set my breakpoint here. Debug, stop debugging, hit F5. So I reach this line of code here, v10 equals v11. So they're both going to be assigned to be the same now, right? So v10 is the vector 11, 11. v11 is the vector 11, 11. And then I change v11. But v10 doesn't get changed now. That's what structs are in C sharp. Structs are value types. You know, this is the same behavior that you would get if these were floats or integers or primitive types. Does everybody understand that? So struct in C-sharp is not the same as a struct in C. It's a value type. Um, the structs in C are also value types, but anyway. How are they different though? Huh? How are they different? How are they different to... Value types. They're different to um, classes. Structs and classes are different, because structs are what are called value types. I know, I know what you're saying, but with structures, it's in 
C and C sharp? How are they different? Oh, well, they're different because like you can put methods on a struct in C sharp, whereas you can't have methods on a struct they're in still C. Both huh? they're still both there are value types in C as well, yeah. Uh, but of course, C is complicated because you have pointers and things as well. So you can make them into references essentially by using pointers, you know? Or you can have this kind of behavior, but, but you, you know you need to change the code. When you're looking at this code here, you don't know whether it's a value type or a reference type until you hover over it, and doesn't even tell you doesn't even tell you whether it's a value type or a reference type. You need to look at the code. Change it back to your class. All right, let's take a short break, okay? And come back in ten minutes, and we'll do more things with matrices. Mm-hmm.